Hey, yeah, can I just get a pale ale? A stale ale. Christian Bale ale! Oh, that's hoppy. Oh, yeah. It's real good. And it comes in a fedora. All right, chances are you've probably heard of an IPA if you've gone out for drinks with a hipster or me. But what exactly is an IPA? Let's find out. IPAs, or IPAs as nobody calls them, are well known for their predominantly hoppy flavor. So let's start there. What is a hop? Well, a hop is the flower of the Hupimus lupulus plant found only in a freaking Whoville. Hops have been used to flavor beer for like a thousand years and was considered a much better alternative to what they were using at the time, like dandelions, marigold, and I'm not kidding, something called whorehound. IPA stands for India Pale Ale. Sounds like a sentence fragment, tastes like a good time. Now the word pale has to do with its color, the word ale to do with its brewing process, and the word India has to do with this. The flavor of an IPA has been around since the mid 17th century and in 1768 a guide was published called Every Man His Brewer and in that the author Samuel Child said it was absolutely necessary to have more hops in your beer when shipping for long periods of time to hotter climates even though nowadays there is little to no science to back that. Up. So when the British in the 1700s were talking about hot places, look no further than India, their newly acquired capital city. I don't know much about that kind of history. No, but seriously, there was a lot of British troops occupying India at that time, and they needed beer, so there were British companies that would send beer there for them, all with the notion that they had to have lots of hops in it. Now there is a lot of speculation as to whether or not this is the truth behind the backstory of IPA, but it works and that's what I like to believe. Okay, so let's go forward from where we were, but back from where we are now. 1978. The American president at the time, Jimmy Carter, made it legal to brew small batches of wine and beer for personal consumption. Now this led way to a massive craft brewing movement. So why do people care so much about IPA? Well, generally, over the last couple decades, there have been lots of craft brew contests. And IPAs have by far been the most winningest beer, mainly being the fact that you cannot buy an extremely hoppy IPA beer from any large companies. Okay, now before you rebuttal that, let me tell you a joke with my douchebag hat on. What did Alexander Keith say when he walked into an IPA party? Nothing, because he was fucking murdered. For some reason, Alexander Keith's got away with calling themselves an IPA, and it is definitely more like an amber or a dark lager or something and then they go and they come out with a hop series which is three different kinds of hop beer and none of them are really an IPA they're just Alexander Keith's with hop flavor syrup in it or something okay douchebag hat coming off now okay let's go back to hipsters so you may have heard the term IBU now that is not them discussing the propane power of their barbecue even though it sounds like it it actually stands for international bittering units, which sounds made up, but it is actually what it stands for. It's meant to be the relative scale of measuring bitterness across all beers, but the word relative kind of makes it all worthless. Let's say I'm Betsy No Beer and I walk into a bar and I say, well, that beer has one IBU and that beer has a hundred IBUs. Guess I'll start there because I don't know what I'm doing. She'll drink it. It'll still taste bitter. For example, let's go to another part of the tongue. What if it was ISUs, International Sweetness Units, and you say, this little piece of candy is a 20 ISU. Well, you put that in your mouth and it's going to be sweet if that's the first piece of sugar that you ever eat. So before you go around asking IBU content and trying to sound like you know what you're talking about, make sure that you have an understanding of why you are drinking that amount of IBU. If you walk into a bar and ask your server how many IBUs the barking squirrel has, she will probably laugh at you with her friends. So to go back, if craft brewing is the beer of the people and IPA is the beer of the craft brewing contests, then you should probably try an IPA and you will hate it because at first nobody likes it but I guarantee one day you'll be sitting on a patio and your friend will plunk down a full pitcher of IPA in front of you and you'll have one sip 
thus beginning the lifelong search for the perfect IPA. Oh, what was that? What did you say? Oh, sorry, what did you Oh, me? Oh, my top three IPA? Okay. Number three, Phillips Brewing Electric Unicorn White Ale. This stuff is dope. Number two, these are some local guys. It's Yellow Dog down in Port Moody, and they have a killer IPA. It's amazing. Go get it now. And my number one, I think I like it because it's like Christmas because they don't really sell it up here. You can only buy it at a few small places just on tap. They are from Portland, I am from Vancouver, and it is called Deschutes Brewery Fresh Squeezed. It is mind-blowingly amazing. So call them and tell them to bring it to you now. So I understand that my three are very local to me and your IPAs will be at three complete opposite different ones, so I don't want to hear what your three are. And apparently in England, IPAs now are like shitty tall boys that homeless people buy one can at a time. So if you live in England, that's not what I'm talking about. But seriously, I do really want to know what your beers are. Are they IPA? Do you like stout? Do you like lager? Anything like that. And give me another topic to talk about. What don't you understand that you want to be heard talked at you very loud and fast with a dude with big flippy hair in his garage? Let me know and I'll tell you. I think I might do ISIS next because they're just going around murdering everybody in the world. I'm going to turn these lights off and hey, it was good talking to you guys. And I will be around, so don't even worry.